Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. And we have Dr. Michael Haley, and he is a nutritionist. He's also a chiropractor, but today we are talking about how to get your gut and your skin in great order and great shape, how to heal psoriasis and how to get your constipation moving. So welcome Dr. Haley. Chantel, thank you so much for having me on your show. So let's first start start talking about your gut and your skin. So I think a lot of people really relate to me because it's so funny because people say to me all the time, they're like the one thing I personally have not been able to get under control is my psoriasis. I still have, I have a spot right here. If you look, I have um, a spot right here on my forehead and then right underneath my breasts, I have a spot right there. So it's kind of like, those are my three problem areas. And people come to me all the time. They're like, oh my gosh, you do fasting. You eat really clean. You do all these great things and you are still struggling with your skin. And so I've been very open and honest about that is one area I have not been able to combat. And so we're grateful that you're on here. So kind of tell us what are some things if someone like me that you say, what could be some of the issues that are still going on underlying to fix this? You know, Chantel, I'm going to present things in a different perspective. Okay. And I believe that today you're going to hear something that stands out in your mind. And for you, it's going to be, that's, that, that's it right there. That makes so much sense. That's the one little shift that I need to make. And you're going to have listeners with the same thing and they might hear something different that I say, but mm-hmm. we are going to present things in it from a different perspective mm-hmm. so that not only the things that we eat, but how we eat them so that even changing the intent a little bit will change and changing our understanding of how digestion really works. Um, it's going to give you what you need to get over that hump, make changes and get on the path to getting rid of those spots. Okay. I'm fully convinced. And, you know, I like to start out by looking at first the skin and the gut really as the same organ. Meaning if you have a skin condition, chances are, in fact, I would say more than chances are, this is reality. You're going to have inflammatory gut problems as well. We don't often see those and we may not even be symptomatic. We may have seemingly good digestion, but see the skin as an outward picture of what's happening inside you. And if you think about it, really, what is our skin? Our skin kind of wraps around and from our face, it kind of folds in on the inside and we're in our cheeks. And if you go further deep, you're in your throat and eventually into your stomach and your small intestines down to your large intestines out your anus, which again is blended into the, you know, butt cheeks. Your skin is connected with your gut. It's almost like you're one of those squishy bags. Have you ever had one of those squishy bags where you put it on your finger and it can keep on rolling and rolling and rolling? The only reason we can't do that is we have bones, thank God. That stopped that from happening. But essentially, it's like one continuous organ. Now, they're both this epithelial tissue, which is a specialized kind of tissue that not only absorbs, but also excretes. Yes, your skin eats and drinks. Your skin excretes. We sweat. We lose waste through our skin. Our skin is a detoxification organ. And it also eats and drinks, which is why doctors will give medicine patches pain patches, hormone patches. They give you medicine, delivering it through your skin. It's a digestive organ, just like your gut. Um, So I don't need to say any more about that, right? Can we see them kind of as the same organ, same system? So with that, let's address the more mucosal aspect of that organ, which is inside us in the gut. Now, this is where I like to change our perspective on what's actually going on on inside your gut. What's happening to the food that you eat? And, you know, just asking your listeners, think about this right now. Who is doing the digestion? 
And where is that happening? And, you know, people say, well, I digest what I eat, right? Mm, probably not. You know, inside your stomach, you have this very acidic environment. And if there's any digesting going on, that's where it is, where the pH is annihilating, annihilating animal foods, not necessarily plant foods, not necessarily those fibrous things that are in the fruits and vegetables that we eat, but maybe uh, the, the, the meat and, and the dairy and, and the eggs and the fish, those things are going to be broken down by the acidic environment inside your stomach. But once they go from your stomach and start moving down into your small intestines, what's really happening there? We have this microbiome that actually does the digesting for us. And this is important. I'm going to connect this in just a moment, why this is so important. But you have this, this flora of, well, sure, bacteria and probably some protozoa and some funguses, yeasts, and, you know, maybe even worms. And they are taking the food we eat and changing it into, just like what happens outside, turning it into soil. And then, just like our bodies being like a tree, the roots of our body, which is your villi with the secondary roots on a tree, the branches, maybe your microvilli, all spread out, sinking into the soil made by this microbiome to absorb the nutrients for our body. Now, why is this understanding so important? The one place that digestion really, where we really have an important role is in our mouths. Chewing our food, breaking it down, working in these digestive enzymes. That's really where we do our part in digestion. And if we're not preparing that food correctly, if we're not preparing it well for that microbiome, I think of, uh, you know, have you ever seen the, you know, Nathan's hot dog eating contest where, you know, they shove down like, you know, a hundred hot dogs in about a minute, <laughs> they're swallowing their hot dogs whole. And I guarantee their microbiome really can't work with that as well as if they had consumed food and actually chewed it and mushed it up and worked in some digestive enzymes, turning it into a nice mush for the bacteria. It's like if you ferment foods, you know, you don't put a culture in there, you put a culture in it and you maybe mix it in so it gets all over the place so those bacteria can go to work on the whole batch. You know, um, when you make bread, you don't just, you know, put yeast on top of it and expect it to get through the hole that you work it in and knead it. You spread out the culture. You, you get the bacteria working for you. You give them something they can work with and you spread them out. That's what's happening when we digest our food. We're making it something that they can work with to actually do the digesting for us. So the roots of our guts can absorb the nutrients that they need. Now with that, I bet you someone that's listening said, wow, you know, I don't really chew my food and maybe I should. Would you agree? Yeah, I will tell you. It's, you know, it's funny that you say that. And every time someone comes on the show and they're like, you know, the number one thing that you can do that to help is slow down your eating and chew your food 30 times and, you know, really working on getting those enzymes. The first place is right in your mouth. And I'm like, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. But I will be honest with you. I'm still not doing it. It's funny. I just got out of a call with one of my friends this morning and she was saying how she was joking. They were whole family was joking me on how I don't chew my food and I eat so fast. And so it's, it's, it's definitely a problem that I have and I can talk about it. I'm so much better than I was, but I still don't slow down to eat and I don't chew my food the way I need to. It's just, it's a problem that I need to kind of look really down deep to the root of the issue of why I am in such a rush when I eat. Yeah, and it, it has nothing to do with what kinds of foods you're eating. I mean, in that discussion that I that we just had, um, someone's going to say, oh, well, you know, he mentioned breads. Who would eat bread because it has gluten? He, he mentioned eggs. You shouldn't eat eggs. You know, he meat. He talked about meat. You know, it's not about 
what foods you're eating. It's about how you're eating them and how you're preparing them. Hey guys, I'm so excited. My new book, One Meal and a Tasting is out now. And if you order the book on Amazon, just the regular paperback edition, if you go in and make a review, you will get the audio book for free. Send a copy of your receipt to questions at chantelrayway.com and you'll get the audio book right away. Now, you said that you eat a clean diet. What does that mean? You know, I, I would say that really, I try to avoid gluten. I try to have a organic dairy if I can. I try to have very little grains if possible. I try to eat lots of like fruits, vegetables, and lean meats is like the majority of my diet. And then I sprinkle in other things. But I have a great question from a listener. Let me read it to you. I just love, love this question. And then you can expand on this. It's from a lady named Geneva Cortez, if I'm pronouncing that right, from St. George, Utah. She says, I first want to thank you. I've lost over 30 pounds and I have about 15 pounds to go. I've listened to your book on audio, one meal and a tasting four times. And that's what I believe have gotten those 30 pounds off. But I do still have a problem. I have major psoriasis and eczema issues. I have cut out dairy, cut out gluten. I've tried no grains and I still have the same issues. I feel like cutting them out doesn't make an improvement. So it's really hard to keep going. I've heard you on your podcast saying you have skin issues too, but I don't remember exactly what kind of issues they were. But is there anything that you've done to make any kind of improvements? Please give any products and practical steps and no woo-woo ideas, LOL. And so that is from Geneva Cortez in St. George, Utah, which I didn't even know there's a city named St. George, but I always say, I always learn new cities and places from doing this podcast. So how would you respond for really practical tips? We gave one, right? Chewing yeah. your food. What else could she do to improve her skin? Um, well, let's continue on with this um, perspective of the gut being the same organ as the skin and talk a little bit more about the soil, because again, we're doing our best to heal the inside so that the outside looks good. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is where we have to get into that talk about chemicals. You know, if inside our gut we're making soil, it's just like farmland. And how do you make good soil out there? You nurture the microbiome of the soil, of the dirt. There's a problem, farmers spray with pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, and not only does it you know, kill weeds and pests and bugs, it's killing the things that would make the soil healthy, which is why farmers now have to use fertilizers to deliver nutrients into that, you know, into that plant, into their vegetation, into whatever they're growing the soil becomes dead in the same way as we're consuming pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, antibiotics, there we'll call all of those antibiotics of different kinds. We are damaging the soil of our intestines, just like they'll damage the soil outside when we put them in our spray those in our garden. If we did, as we consume these things in our diet or even in our cosmetics, you know, as we are taking in these toxins, we start damaging our microflora. When that microflora is damaged, as we kind of kill it off and make that walls of our intestines raw and inflamed, we're going to start seeing them in our skin. So I'm not answering the question. I'm I'm hoping that we help you understand how these things work because suddenly that definition of clean diet needs a little bit more examination. Why is that? Well, there's even organic pesticides. You know, things that are approved for organic farming that will kill and if we start thinking of all the sources of chemistry 
that we're taking in that is a form of an antibiotic. And let me just ask a few questions because to help drive home, what's an antibiotic? Because people say, I don't take antibiotics. I stopped taking those when I moved away from my parents. They gave them to me when I got earaches and I haven't had one since when I moved it, you know. Okay, if you're eating conventional animal foods, antibiotics are in their diet. It's part of what they eat. And if you know, you've heard it said, you are what you eat. Well, if they are what they ate and you eat them, then you are what they ate, <laughs> which you're taking in those chemicals, those antibiotics, those hormones, and all those other chemicals that are in that they were given, which is why we want organic and grass fed. But guess what? There's still chemistry even in the farmlands that are organic. And yes, they are using organic chemicals designed to kill. So an antibiotic isn't something that you get as a shot from a doctor to kill off an infection. Anti is against, bio is life. Let's think of it as anything that is against life that might be making it into our systems. Why is chlorine in the public municipal water supply? It's there to kill. It's a form of an anti-life antibiotic. Why are preservatives in food? People say it's to make the food last longer. How is that? By being an antibiotic, by being against life in the food. When we consume these things with chemicals in them, whether they're preservatives, artificial colors, flavors, artificial sweeteners, chemicals of any kind, animals that have consumed these things, when they get into our system, do they suddenly know to stop killing? It's chemistry that is antibiotic against life. And we're putting them inside this delicate flora that, remember, is what's responsible for digesting our food, turning it into something that our bodies can actually utilize. But instead, it's killing off the microflora, taking away that barrier between our intestines and our food, inflaming things. And, of course, it's going to show up in our skin. So obviously my first choice is for someone to fast and not eat anything. But if you are really struggling and you need another solution, I want to tell you about a product that I saw. And when I first saw it, I was like, what in the world? This makes no sense. You can't fast by eating a bar. But I do want you to know that a lot of people kind of get stuck and they need a little bit of a crutch. And we all know that fasting can be a huge challenge because you are A, hungry. You've got to dip in energy. You're going to get hangry at times. And so there is this bar. It's called the Fast Bar. It's the only bar scientifically formulated for intermittent fasting. It's non-GMO, gluten-free, you know, no soy, no dairy, all those good things. It's keto-friendly. You can use it if you're doing keto, if you're doing low-carb or plant-based or gluten-free, whatever you want to do, it works for. They've got a bunch of different flavors. My favorite is the blueberry acai. So the bars are available at Sprouts, at FastBar.com, and and at Amazon. And if you use the code WASTEAWAY, you'll get an additional 10% off the already discounted products at fastbar.com. So I guess, you know, one of the things that I want to go to the question that this, this young lady asked, or I don't know how old she is, but basically she's saying, okay, I've tried all these different things, right? I've tried giving up dairy. I've tried giving up grains. I've tried giving I've, I've like cut all this stuff out. She's like, my skin is exactly the same. So why am I going to? So, so let's take that off. How would you respond to that? So it's like, she said, okay, yeah, I've, I've done all these things. My skin yeah. isn't improving. So what, what's the other things that could be causing the skin issues? We still and have to look at practical things. Yeah. We're, we still have to look at what you are eating. Um, you can cut things out, but we don't know, okay, what are you consuming? And hopefully you can look at it from a new perspective and say, okay, I get it. Um, what I'm consuming still does have chemicals in it. I have to cut this out or cut that out and evaluate what I am eating to make sure it is truly clean. Am I buying just organic um, fruits and vegetables that have been sprayed with you know, organic pesticides, or um, am I in touch with the local farm? And I know that, you know, they, they grow it in the soil and there's no sprays being used. Um, 
am I nurturing my gut flora? And for you, that might be, you know, from whatever your perspective is, it might be with fermented foods. You mentioned dairy. I love organic dairy, uh, but for me, I like it hypercultured. So for me, um, you know, I, I once a week um, and I'll be starting my next batch tonight. I'll make a two and a half gallon batch of organic yogurt. Um, to me, that's taking a lot of the sugars that are in the milk. They're getting consumed by the bacteria, uh, turning them into various, you know, acids and things that'll, you know, enzymes that'll help my digestion and create a nice environment for my microbiome. Um, if you don't like dairy, it might be sauerkraut and, you know, a lot of like just store-bought dairy might be inflammatory. And when it's hypercultured, it actually for you may or may not be, um, how do you find out probably an elimination diet and you see what happens. And when you add it in a cultured form, does your problem come back? You know, um, sauerkraut, if you don't like dairy is a cultured food, um, creates a nice environment for nurturing your microbiome. So we start consuming foods that are geared towards healing our microbiome, uh, not taking away from it. And then there are certain gut healing foods as well, because again, we're trying to heal from the inside out. I like to tell people when they say, you know, you know, I have a company that manufactures a raw aloe vera product. And people always ask me, how much should I drink? I like to tell them, drink a whole cup a day, eight ounces a day, and then look in the mirror. Uh, because a lot of people start noticing that their complexion is changing because the things you consume will show up in your skin. So it's eliminating the things that are inflaming you, creating a bad environment for your microbiome, and consuming the things that are promoting it. And for some people, aloe vera might take them the other direction. Um, it happens to be one of those foods that are very um, low on the allergenic scale. Not, I don't really know anyone that's allergic to aloe, but maybe you are, and maybe it would take things in the wrong way. Bone stock soup happens to be very, not only healing for your joints with all the glucosamines and chondroitins and things that'll help, you know, make your joints ache less, but also very gut healing. And again, when you start seeing a good, healthy gut, it starts showing up in your skin. So I can't really answer the question, what else do you have to eliminate? We really want to look at your diet and say, okay, what is in there that could still be causing the problems? And the easiest way really is an elimination diet. You take everything away. And you have nothing but say bone stock soup, as much as you want. And chances are, you know, you'll get to a nice, even digestion and then add one thing. Um, broccoli to your bone stock soup. As you start building this soup, how'd things go? Did you have a problem with it? A flare up of any kind, whether it's digestive or skin? Um, if so, take the broccoli out of your diet and maybe try a cauliflower or if the broccoli was good, add the cauliflower and then, you no, know, things are still good. Okay. Well, um, maybe you want to add some of the chicken or beef that you got from that bone stock, you know, and start building your soup one item at a time. As soon as things backfire, take that out. Oh, I decided to have chocolate and I had a flare up. Oh, okay. Chocolate's probably on the naughty list. Hey guys, I really want you to join our intermittent fasting and OMAD Facebook group. We're doing tons of giveaways right now for posting your before and after pictures. And just for posting a question in there, we're giving away free protein shakes, some digest aid, all kinds of fun stuff. So please join our intermittent fasting and OMAD Facebook group. The link is in the show notes. So I was just going to say on your site, you have this aloe vera, aloe vera health drink that comes frozen. It's like 58 ounces. And so explain, cause I, so I have, I saw also that you have an aloe vera pup, like a live and ready to plant kind of aloe vera. So I've got two aloe vera plants in my house right now. And so explain, how do you make that aloe vera health drink? Like if you actually took the the aloe vera, what, what do you do to make that drink? I'm going to describe the process to you, but it's going to be easier to see. I will suggest if you Google how to flay aloe vera, uh, I'll probably be the first result on YouTube in a, about a 
three or four minute video that shows you how to do that best. But let's talk about it. Um, you want a nice big thick leaf and you're gonna cut it at the base and you'll start with harvesting the leaf, the lowest leaf on the plant, which is the most developed, fullest, most mature. Um, unless it's in the dirt and rotting and falling off, okay, go to the next one. Take that one off and go to the next one up. So take a nice big leaf and the first thing you'll do is cut off the ends and the spines. So now you have a fillet that still has the skin on two sides. And you're gonna actually let that bleed. What do you mean, let it bleed? Well, just like if you pulled a, you know, a, a sapodilla or a papaya you know, off, a, off a tree, and you see a sap bleeding from the stem, that skin of the aloe, when you cut the ends off, is gonna bleed a sap. Now that sap is the very bitter anti-nutrient irritant, might even irritate your skin or your digestion. It's probably that part of the plant, just like, you know, some things have, you know, some beans and things have lectins on the outside that are there to protect it. That anti-nutrient is probably there to protect the leaf, but the gel on the inside is where the healing is. So once that's done bleeding and you rinse it all off so that you're not getting any of that bitterness in your aloe, you put it on a table and you slide a dull blade down one end, probably the bottom side, taking off the bottom skin flip it over and do the same thing, taking off the other skin and you just get this big, slippery, slimy, translucent filet of aloe vera that you can put in a blender and turn into a drink. Now, if I was doing it for my skin, I would do it differently. I would probably cut a nice little section, maybe about an inch of that leaf, I'd probably, again, cut the ends off. I'd cut the spines off. I'd let it bleed. And then I'd cut sections of about one inch. And I would peel the leaf, the, the skin off of one side of that. And I'd keep the skin on the other to hold it because those, that gel is too slippery. It'll slip right out of your fingers, no matter how good you are. But if you leave the skin on one side, you pinch that between your fingers and just rub the little piece that you have on the affected area. And really with a little one inch section, you could pretty much cover your whole body in about a minute. Um, it goes a long ways. So that's how I would prepare it for not only topical application, but also for consuming. Hey guys, I'd love for you guys to listen to a podcast that we did about the side effects from wine and the differences between natural wine and traditional wine. So go to ChantelRayway.com slash wine and you'll see transcripts, you'll see some different episodes, but here's the thing. You can get your penny bottle now of dry farm wines and make the decision that if you're gonna have wine, to make sure you have the most natural, healthy wine in the world with no added additives, only natural ingredients. All the other wines out there have so much sulfate, so much sugar. Why put that poison in your body? So get your penny bottle now at ChantelRayWay.com slash wine. So for the one that you have, is it really, is, is there anything added to that drink? It's just pure aloe vera that you guys do. The process that I described to you is almost our identical process at the farm where we're, you know, mass producing this aloe. It is hand filleted. It is, well, the leaves are, uh, once we cut the ends and the spines off, we uh, rinse them. They go to a fillet table where it's a hand filleted process to take the skins off. They go through a big commercial grinder instead of a blender. The blender will foam it up a little bit. It's what you have at home. So you kind of have to use that and, and then let it settle down. Ours goes through a grinder so it doesn't foam it up so much. We then push it through a heat transfer unit, a bunch of stainless steel pipe that has cold liquid on the outside. So it gets much colder faster. And then from there, we put it in the containers. So we have not filtered it. We have not heat pasteurized it. Um, we haven't added preservatives. We haven't done any processing other than taking the inside of the leaf out and turning it into a mush and then putting it into the bottles and freezing them. So what 
is the benefits of it? Like, have you seen people when they are drinking? And you said you would say taking one, like eight ounces is what you would suggest. Cause you get 54 ounces. You're saying literally you would just drink that eight ounces of it. Would you put it in a smoothie or you would just drink it straight? I mean, I drink it straight every day. I have a nice big glass to start my day every day. And, um, you can add stuff to it, but it's just more that you have to drink. And I, you know, I, I love my, um, uh, you know, my smoothies, but I like my smoothies to taste like the fruits that I put in them. <laughs> Aloe isn't horrible when it's processed right, uh, but it's kind of like, you know, I, I, I like okra, I'll eat it, but I don't really look forward to it because it's slimy, you know, al- and it doesn't taste that good, but aloe's kind of the same way. It's slimy. It has a unique texture and it's not delicious. Um, so it's one of those things that most of our customers are choosing to drink because of what it does for them. Um, some people rave about it and tell me how good it is, but I, you know, even myself after, you know, 20 years of this, I don't look forward to it. (laughs) Yeah. So like, give me an example. Have you ever seen anyone who maybe has had psoriasis and the, and then you said after they drank this for, you know, two weeks or a week, like what are the results that you've seen for people to actually have this really heal your gut? Uh, Yes, people have said, wow, this has tremendously helped. I can't think of anyone in particular where they said this cured me of my psoriasis. Uh, But, you know, we've gotten and and again, most of our customers, they come to us, they purchase from us. And I don't have the conversation that we're having right now. Mm -hmm. Um, When it comes to these things, I'm not a magic bullet guy. And this might help you tremendously, but it's really understanding digestion and saying, okay, what else do I need to do? Is it chew my food, eliminate the toxins, eliminate the foods that I'm allergic to, consume things that agree with me and we're all different. The foods that work well for you will probably different, be different than the foods that work well for me. So finding your ideal diet for your particular body and who you are. Um, so it's really understanding this and making additional changes to achieve your maximum potential, which is not only skin health, it's energy levels. It's, you know, clear thinking, healthy digestion. You know, if you're, if you're having the runs or constipation, there's something wrong. Let's get that more normal. And and that's evidence that your digestion's not working. Of course, you're going to have skin problems. You know, let's get everything. You should be sleeping good. Let's make changes so that everything works more like it's supposed to. Awesome. Well, this was great. Thank you so much for being on our show today. Tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. You know, if you like what you've heard, check out the Dr. Haley Show podcast. And the two interviews that I would uh, look up specifically are with Dr. Natasha uh, Campbell McBride and Sandra Katz, which is the author of Wild Fermentation. Um, Two phenomenal interviews that really help understand fermentation, gut flora, Uh, and then you can find us at HaleyNutrition.com. That's where we have our aloe vera and other things. Awesome. Well, you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now.